Okay, thank you very much. I'm just searching my presentation. Um, it's a pleasure being here. It's my second time in Ireland. I don't know this country, and I have been told that it is an anarchistic country. <laughs> so now I'm really looking forward to work with you and think about what we can do together to use the anarchistic power to become more sustainable, because that's my subject. I'm talking about sustainability and design. And um, a little introduction about myself. I studied actually art, architecture, art, and industrial design. And I focused on sustainability and design very early, so I'm doing that already since, let's say, 1992. And I started my own company, which is called eConcept in Cologne. It's based in Germany, and we are running a lot of research and innovation projects. We are consulting companies. We are really focusing only on design for sustainability and for environment. When we do a lot of research, we also have to publish the research because it's partly publicly funded, so we do some books and some presentations. You can visit our homepage and look for all the work that we've actually done during the last 20 years almost. Now, because I'm the first speaker here talking about sustainability, I want to set the scene a little bit. I'm pretty aware that all of you are somehow related to sustainability, hopefully, or you at least know what it is, but still, let's look at it. What's the problem? We know that there's something like global warming out there. We can even feel it, although we had a very cold winter in Germany and we had a lot of snow and no one believes me when I tell them, hey guys, it's global warming, but still, I'm sure it's there and you know also, and we know why. <laughs> we know that we are actually also oh, use, uh, creating it in a way because of our behavior. And we know that there's a big imbalance between a lot of people in the world living in so-called developing countries. It's about 80% of the people, but they only consume like 20% of the raw materials and energy worldwide. And we, the 20% living in the ri rich countries, the industrialized countries, we are consuming more about 80% of all the resources, of all the energy. And of course, that's not fair. And of course, they will develop if you look at India, if you look at China, and then we will know that we have a big problem. So if you talk about globalization, um, well, it's the question, how can we control this global trade? Because there are national governments having national legislation, but there are global companies acting global, and it's very difficult to understand how we can influence this globalization. I can tell you from all the research that we did that there are three domains, three consumption domains, that are the most impactful, and they are creating about 80% of all our consumption in Western industrialized economies, and that is energy and housing, that is mobility and tourism, and that is food and agriculture. So if you want to start with something, focus on these three domains and try to make them more sustainable, and then you're already on a very good way. So what can we do here? Well, energy, of course, it's about reduction of the consumption, it's about more efficiency, it's about renewables instead of non-renewables, and so on. If you talk about mobility, well, let's first of all think about our mobility needs. Do we really live, need to live very far away from where we work? Do, do we really need to do all this you know, traveling? Can we organize our lives differently that we don't need that much mobility? And then if we need mobility, well, what kind of means do you use? Mm. If it comes to food, I'm sorry to tell you, it's about eating less meat and dairy products. Because it's very stupid that we all feed all the nice grains and all the stuff, first of all, to the animals, and then we eat the animals at the end. It's very inefficient, it's very unhealthy. Just go back to a diet where you eat a little bit less meat, and then you will already do a very big step forward. The goal altogether is that we move towards sustainability, sustainable development, and that's, as you know, it's this triple bottom line principle. It's talking about people, the social side, it's talking about the planet, the environment, and it's talking about the profit, the economy. And we need to combine them all and create solutions that are sustainable in all the three dimensions and not just in one. Okay, so what do we do in our work? I show you a little bit, just teasers of what is actually our activities, how we try to in convince companies and everybody to move towards more sustainable design. First of all, we need to be aware what's happening out there. 
So we watch the trends, we watch the drivers, we watch what's happening. And we see a lot of different trends. Okay, environment, we talked about that. You are aware there are a lot of problems. Also, legislation is moving towards more sustainability. We have a lot of European legislation, like end-of-life vehicles directive, like EUP, the so-called eco-design directive. The government's actually asking us to become more sustainable, more aware. There is technology moving in the right directions, a lot of new renewable energy sources here, a green building which is designed by SOA Architects, which is actually agriculture bringing back into the city, so it's producing food within buildings and things like that. And we have a lot of you know, societal, economical problems at the moment, which I think we cannot solve as an own individual problem. We have to see that all together, like, yes, we go to fight the financial crisis, but at the end we should think about, is our economic system sustainable? And if not, what can we do to make it more sustainable? So it needs to be like a complex move towards more sustainability in all these different fields. And interestingly, a lot of young guys especially are creating new business ideas. We call them so, so we call them socialpreneurs, social entrepreneurs, who actually want to do good business, but at the same time, they want to do it in a sustainable way. And these concepts are very, very interesting. Okay, another trend that we can see at the moment is greenwashing. And I think a lot of, especially car industry companies are doing it. And I think that's definitely not the way forward. And we should just forget that. And if you watch some, you know, uh, surveys about consumers, what they think about it, well, they don't like it. And about 50% say it's stupid and about 10% say it's a waste of money. So better not do that. Okay. Then we talk a lot about scenarios. How will the world be in 10 or 15 or 20 years? And I just introduced three scenarios very quickly because I don't have so much time. One is talking about the LOHAS. You've heard about the LOHAS? No, Lifestyle of Health and Sustainability. It's a new group of people. Actually, they are not new. They are there for quite a while, but they are a big, big, big market potential. They are really interesting consumer groups because they have the education, they have the money, and they have the will to behave in a more sustainable way, but they still want to enjoy their lives. So they want the luxury, but they want it in a green way. So they are very interesting people. You can see in your society, this is a lifestyle picture of Germany, what kind of target groups you have, and the LOAs are quite spread mm -hmm. throughout the whole society. And um, we can see that these LOHAs, they show what we call political consumerism. So when they consume, they want to know, OK, what's my impact on society? So if I prefer this eth ethical investment, I will create more renewable energies, for instance. Or if I buy this specific product, I give a signal to the companies that they should produce more of these sustainable products. So they use their buying behavior to influence companies as well. Information is important, eco-labels, because only if the consumers know that a product is more sustainable, they can do the, the good selection. So these are things we have to talk about. And it's definitely about a cool lifestyle. It's not, you know, like the 70s or the 60s product, flower power and muesli design. It's really going into cool and chic products, but sustainable at the same time. Okay, scenario two, what do we do after oil is running out? And it will be like that. It we don't know really yet when, but we know already energy is getting more important, more expensive, oil is getting more expensive, transportation is getting more expensive. And so we need to think about as designers also, what do we do after oil? So, and there are indeed young design offices like this one in Switzerland, it's called postfossil.ch, and they are designing products without using oil. They are designing for the post-fossil age. And this is the last drop of oil that you can see in this little glass bubble. So it will be so ex 